Hello YouTube and welcome to another Weka tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how with just a single click you can train uh, a classifier from a training data and you can apply that uh, classifier on unseen test instances to classify them. I'm showing you this because I've already shown you how to do this kind of things with Explorer but in Explorer you know it's a bit difficult for you um, to use Explorer to do these stuff because you have to upload the training file then you have to create a model you have to save it and so on so I'm just doing it using the Java API in this case um, I'm using the Java API to produce the whole thing whole machine learning idea the basic machine learning idea of training and testing uh, unseen uh, uh, instances with a single click so Java API is a very powerful tool uh, developed by the Weka uh, team, so I'm just going to use that. So before going uh, into this tutorial, let me show you my training and test uh, data set. So this one is my training data set. It's called Iris Training, but I named that to 2.rf. You can see that in this data set, I have a total four attributes one two three four and i have a class attribute called class which has uh which can actually have three types of very values there now if we are going back to my test set then you can see that in my test set i have uh again four attributes there and these four attribute name and uh, data type they has they have to be uh, exactly the same name and data type as in your training data set and also i have the class attribute in the very end which contains the exact number and exact number of values as in your training data set and their uh, spelling has to be the same the difference here um, uh, between the training and test data set for this example we are just assuming that our test instances are not uh, labeled yet so that's why we are developing we are inducing a classifier from training data and we will apply that uh, classifier on these instances all those instances and uh, then my classifier will tell what value is in, in there so this is the basic idea and the just uh, two things you have to remember that your training and test instances attribute number number numbers there they have to be the same their name has to be the same the data data type has to be the same and also your class attribute has to contain the exact same number of values as in your training data and their spelling just be careful with the spelling as well otherwise you'll, you'll, you'll get an error okay now I'm going back to the Java code I have written for this tutorial so as I'm going to classify um, I'm, I'm just naming that uh, class of my um, of, of the of this uh, class as classify so I will go through every line of this code first I have created a buffer reader object to read uh, my training and test data set. At first, I'm reading it with uh, uh, reading reading my training data with it. So my training data is here 2.rf. Then I'm creating a training object uh, of type instances, and I'm giving the training data set to that uh, training train object. And I'm saying that okay, as you have my training data set remember weka that uh, my class index has is is the my last attribute as you have seen that also the class attribute of my two daughter file is sitting at the very end i'm using the same buffer reader here you can use a different one but i think it's a good idea uh, to use the same one uh, and i'm reading the one dot r which is my test test data set and again I'm creating uh, an object called test of type instances and I'm providing uh, my test data set to that particular object and again I'm saying that my class index is my last attribute in my attributes list and then 
I close uh, the buffer reader there. Okay. Now, I'm sorry, having some te technical difficulties here. Okay. Now, as we go along, in this tutorial, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to induce classifier from J48 algorithm. Of course, you can have, you have the facility to use the others like Naipes, SVM, or Random Forest. So these options, uh, I just commented it out because um, they vary from classifier algorithm to algorithm. So I just um, don't think it's a good idea because it's a general kind of tutorial. So I just uh, left it out. And this J48 type of object tree, I'm using this tree to build a classifier from the training data. So it's very, very straightforward thing. And before doing anything else, I'm creating another object called labeled of type instances. So this will contain all the instances uh, uh, test instances after they are labeled by my classifier, J48 classifier. And this labeled uh, object will have my test set because they are going to be the same. Uh, the only difference is my labeled objects will contain the class attributes provided by my classifier. Then I have uh, a loop, for loop. Uh, because I need to iterate over all the test instances, test instance number zero to um, the number of instances. So every time I'm looping through this, I'll, I'll call that uh, J48 objects classify instance method to classify the first instance. So now you have four attributes, just tell me uh, the last one. And if you have the last one, put it into a double type of a variable called CLS label or class label. And then I, I'm saying that, okay, as you got that, set it as my class value. And then I'm using a buffered writer. When, when my for loop is done for all the test instances, I classify them with my uh, J48 classifier. I, I am using a buffered writer object uh, to write it down as uh, label.r in my uh, drive and then I'm just writing it down and I also closed that uh, buffered writer and it's not seen here. So that's pretty much of it. If we go uh, back to our code and run it, so it's run. So we are going back to my H drive and here a label.r file has been created. So if I open that, now you can see that in my one.r file, I had all those question marks because I didn't know uh, before applying J48 what the class label of these instances are, all of these instances are. Now as I ran that Java file, I have the class instances. So this is the exact same test file uh, one dot r file except that I have now the test uh, instances classes so that's pretty much of it I, I believe that is going to be very very helpful for you because by Java API using Java API you've seen that with a single click you are uh, loading the data sets you are training your classifier with the training data you are applying that model on the test data set which is unseen and the labels of the test instances are, are known. You get all, all of those uh, class labels and you are writing that straight away into a file. So this is very helpful. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, you are getting used to uh, the power of Weka to do these things, especially the power of Java API of Weka. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, don't uh, hesitate to put it uh, in the comment section. If you want to email me, then you can also uh, communicate with me in that way. Thank you very much.